Howdy folks, I got a tackle question the other day and I decided to make a video about it because it brings up an issue that is both pretty interesting, I think, but also it can pay to have an awareness of this issue. So I think it does deserve at least 10 to 15 minutes of your time. So let's go into it. The tackle question was, what is the difference between the graphite leader corto prototype rod and the graphite leader corto rod? So the names are the same, but one of them says prototype, the other one doesn't say prototype. And we're gonna answer the question in the second half of the video. But first, in the first half, I want to talk about what kind of issue does this question symbolize? Because this question is a, is a symbol for much larger problem in the fishing industry. And this problem will come, I'm sure, as a shock to many of you. But much of this flagship merchandise that costs a lot of money, $400, $700 per reel, $400 per rod, much of that flagship merchandise is actually not very profitable. I don't know, what are you talking about? How can $700 not be profitable? Just think about Forget even about fishing products, think about any other products when they were first introduced, like computers, or large, large screen TVs, or iPhones. Just think about what, what we were buying 15 years ago, 20 years ago. You know, I, I was into computers back then. You know, the computers are, were so big and so small, and they would still cost like $3,000. It's ridiculous how expensive computers were back then and they were not even that good. But all technologies, when they are first introduced, they are very expensive just because there are no machines that can produce the, the processor that is so small. The machines don't exist. You have to create the machines. You have to create the software for these machines. You have to hire a bunch of PhDs, and these are not some fake PhDs like in United States, a PhD in social study. You need actual competent engineers to design all of this, and these people are hard to find. So before the very first product is created, sometimes you spend already millions of dollars, just think about it, before you the first unit of the new product comes out of the factory. You're already in the hole millions of dollars. And then, how can you recoup this money? You can't, se you can't sell a Stella fishing reel for $5,000. Just charge $5,000, everybody, and get your money back. How many are you going to sell? Already at the price of $700 for a Stella or $750, who knows? It's already difficult to sell units. That's the problem with this flagship merchandise. Expensive as it is, sometimes it just barely covers the costs and you can't increase the price anymore if you want to sell more, more than five units a year. So they have very, very tight uh, restrictions there on the price that they can charge if they want to sell enough units so people can see it. I'm not saying that it's not worth building this flagship merchandise, but the value of this flagship merchandise is not in their profit that it generates. Because if you think about it, even if this flagship rod or reel has a little bit of profit after everything you said, it has a little bit of profit built into it, but how many are you going to sell from that flagship merchandise? You sell very few units. So just trust me on one thing, selling flagship merchandise is not a good way to, to make money or to get rich. That's not how companies make money. The purpose of the flagship 
merchandise is to build your reputation and to build your brand. And then the brand itself is so valuable that there is many other ways to make money out of the brand and not from that specific flagship merchandise that you all that you only sold 500 units you know out of the same year so the point is the companies very often expensive as it is cannot make money from the flagship merchandise so they have found other ways to make money from the from this flagship merchandise and i'm not going to go into all of them the reputation the brand already covered but one of the ways to make money from this flagship merchandise is to build something that looks exactly like the flagship product but is made of cheap materials and then you literally get a can of spray paint and you just spray paint it exactly the same color and you slap the same name as the prototype model, as the flagship model and now it's confusing enough, both of them look very similar and they, they have the same name but one is much cheaper and now you sell the cheaper product that is, even though it's cheaper, there is much more profit built into it because the components are that much cheaper and the other thing is, even if the profit is the same, let's say $50 per reel you're gonna sell a lot more units of the cheaper reel and pretty much every big fishing company that you can think of is guilty of doing this I don't know if guilty is the right word, but they all do this take Daiwa for example in 2020, they got, they got their very popular Luvius reel that costs about $250. They got a can of spray paint and they just literally painted it black and orange. They removed the mag seal and slapped a big Presso label on it. And there you go. Now, here is your flagship Daiwa Presso, your flagship trout reel what is it under the label presso it's a luvius with black paint bad black paint at that if you watch my video i'm not happy with the quality of the black paint they used remove the max seal boom here you go that's a that's a flagship reel and um, while Daiwa is definitely the biggest offender in playing these games, Shimano has played this game too. If you go back a few years in the days of the Stradic CI4 Plus, Stradic CI, you remember that reel? Very nice reel, but a plastic reel with okay gears. But back then, there was this gorgeous X Sense reel, all black. I mean, that reel had incredible reputation in the bass circles and with good reason i will say it was incredible reel the frame the gears the bearings i mean it was an incredible reel that black accents so what did shimano do they grab a you know the drill right you, you grab the strategic ci4 plus you grab a can of black spray paint and they just painted it all black that's that's all they did they painted it all black and they slapped an accents label on it and there you go here is another accents and wouldn't you look at the price it's it's a little bit cheaper i forgot the prices already but it was definitely cheaper than the original accents but the Stradic CI4 had no DNA connection with the accents. There was nothing. That was like borderline fraud. Because the frame was different. The gears completely different and inferior. All of the bearings inside was, were different. Even the handle was different. There was nothing from the accents in the Stratic CI4 Plus that was painted black. So these games 
they're very confusing and they're very intentional and I don't know sometimes it really border borders fraud what they're doing and this is what I want you to be aware of okay now let's get back to the original tackle question what is the difference between graphite leader core to prototype and the regular graphite leader core to rod, non-prototype? Well, after my review and all of the videos that I did about this rod, and I did a bunch of fishing videos where I put the model name in the title and all of these videos got popular and I am certain that Olympic, the company who owns Graphite Leader and who makes these rods, they got a lot of traffic to this website and they got information from all of their dealers that they're selling a lot of rods. But again, the same question pops. How much profit is there in one of these prototype rods? You think that it's a lot, right? $350? I don't know how much. But think about it. Graphite Leader doesn't manufacture anything. They actually hand build the rods, but they have to buy all of the components. They have to buy these expensive guides from Fuji. I don't know if they roll their, their own blanks or they buy the blanks from a factory. But even if they roll their own blanks, they still have to buy the material from the factory. So they have to buy all of the components for this prototype rod. And then if you remember the prototype rod that I bought and I reviewed and did all the fishing videos, that rod says handmade in Japan. Well, do you think it is cheap to hand make rods in Japan? Why do all of the Japanese companies offshore their production to China and Malaysia and Vietnam and Thailand? if it is cheaper to manufacture in, in Japan. Who doesn't want to manufacture in Japan? Everybody. But, it, but it's expensive. So it is my own guess that there isn't a lot of profit built in this prototype rod that I purchased. And even if there was some profit, I don't know how much, but let's say there is a $100 profit but how many rods can you sell? You see that the same problem, you are not gonna sell very many. So after all of this traffic, or perhaps this decision was predetermined and just coincided. But after my reviews for certain, just chronologically, if, I, if we list the events, other models started to appear on their website. And now there is not one, but two copies of the prototype rod. Now you have the prototype that costs 350. I'm, I'm rounding. Then you have the regular Corto, not prototype, that costs, I don't know, 280. And then you have the Corto UX that costs 180. I don't know, something like this. So you can already tell that the same game will be played here. And now let's discuss, just out of curiosity, what is the exact difference. And to their credit, if you go, I'm going to put links. I don't want to jump here on the computer, but as I'm talking, I'm going to put uh, the links and the screenshots so you can uh, follow up. If you compare the Corto prototype with the regular Corto, to their credit, Graphite Leader listed in very good detail the features of each rod so you can actually get a pretty good idea of what you are losing when you drop from the prototype to the regular Corto. And the guides at first glance at least they look like they used the same guides uh, when they drop to the regular Corto but the blank if you compare the features of the two blanks I mean, even if you don't know anything about blank technology, you will see that the prototype has like six technologies listed, six features of this blank. And the regular Corto has only two features listed. And these features are not even the same that were listed in the, uh, in the prototype. 
So just even to an outsider of the fishing industry, it becomes just immediately obvious that there was a big sacrifice in the blank when you went down from the prototype to the regular corto. Then the next question is, what makes a rod? Is it justifiable to call the regular corto still corto? To me, it is not. Now, I'll give you my own percentages here. You can disagree, but the idea I'm sure will be the same. For me, the blank of the rod is 80% of the rod. It's, it's 80%. Then the guides make another, let's say, 15% of the rod. And the rest is just the handle and the paint and the clear coat and kind of aesthetics, maybe hook keeper. Everything else is just only 5%. But if you replace the blank of a rod with what appears to be significantly inferior blank, this is no longer to me the same rod, even though the handle is the same and the guides are, appear to be the same, but I have my doubts about that too, because they did use different images. But even if they are, if you replace the blank, there is, you completely cut off the DNA connection between the Corto prototype and the Corto. Think about this, completely different blank completely different blank. There is no telling how the other blank will cast. There is no telling how sensitive it will be. You cannot just assume it will be just, it will be a hundred dollars less sensitive. You, you, you can't think like this. Or it will be what, 25% less sensitive and it's gonna cast 25% less or whatever like this. It may still be a good blank, but you have no more any information about the regular corto. You, you lost the DNA connection. If anything, if you keep the blank, but put cheaper guides, we can say, okay, the blank will bend the same way. It will catapult the same way. It will have the elasticity. Yeah, the guides additionally, you know, provide some fine tuning to this, but it's in the blank. The DNA of the rod is in the blank. As long as you have the same blank, you can play with the names and that would be justifiable, in my opinion. So, keeping the same guides and they always keep the same paint, you can rely on that this can of spray paint, that's where they make all of the money. It's in the can of spray paint. They're gonna look very similar, they're gonna have the same handle, the guides will even be the same. But the blank, where most of the money is, the blank will be inferior. Again, I'm not saying it's a bad rod. I'm saying that there is no DNA connection. I want to be very clear about this. I don't think the regular Corto is a bad rod. And I don't think it's a bad value. Because this company has great reputation. And just based on their reputation, I'm certain it's still a decent rod and a decent value. My point is precisely that there is no DNA connection between the prototype and the regular Corto. And then the cheaper one, there is another Corto called Corto UX. Again, if you compare the blanks, the blank is cheaper yet. You lose all of the features from the prototype. It's completely different blank. The blank is inferior even compared to the regular Corto. So this is not one, but the, the DNA is cut not once but twice and then you lost even the guides at least the regular Corto has the high-end guides but the cheap Corto, the Corto US lost the guides too now this is really for me pushing it okay this this really borders fraud you cannot call the Corto UX Corto how is it a Corto? I mean, there is nothing shared with, with the regular Corto prototype, with the Corto prototype. There is nothing even shared with the regular Corto. The Corto UX has, is, has different blank and has different guides. Then what is left? It doesn't even have a hook keeper. 
that they can share. The only thing that connects the core to UX with the prototype is the paint and the name. That's, there is nothing else left. Maybe the handle, because the handle is so cheap, perhaps, and creates the illusion of products that, are, that have DNA connection. But they have no DNA connection. Completely unrelated products. And that's the point of this video. This is where I'm going to end the video. Again, I want to be very clear. I'm not criticizing the company. And I definitely, I know a bunch of you bought this Core 2 UX rod because it looks so beautiful also. It looks like the other rod. Those of you who bought the rod, I'm not saying that the product is garbage. Although it is definitely inferior, that is objectively verifiable. It is definitely inferior on many levels to the prototype. But that doesn't make it a bad product and it definitely doesn't make it a bad value. The rod, the Corto UX might still be worth the money, but you cannot use any of the information from my reviews uh, or watching how the rod bends in the fishing videos. You cannot use any of this information because there is zero DNA there is zero DNA connection between the prototype and the UX rod.